Good morning and good afternoon to all of you early birds. Thank you very much for showing up early and uh, having some patience with us while we await some last minute people to join. We'll probably start in, in about two to three minutes. So um, again, thank you for your patience. All right, let's just kick things off. Thank you everybody for joining us today. We are gonna be going over um, data culture and using Power BI to kind of secure that data culture. So hopefully by the end of our presentation today, you'll have a good understanding of why data culture is important to your organization and how Power BI can help. So my name is Nick. I am a bold enthusiast here at Alpha Bold, a sales executive with 10 years of customer focused account management under my belt. And today we are joined by Abbas Aslam, who is our BI master with 11 years of experience and specialties in business intelligence, data science, enterprise data, warehouse and warehousing and big data. We also have Tab Ali, who is our VP of consulting here. He's got 15 years of experience in consulting for cloud systems and business management and is a digital transformation specialist. So let's go over what we're going to be showcasing today because we've got quite a few things. First, we'll go over why data culture is so important and then we'll deep dive into what data culture actually is. Uh, we'll then go into the analytics value chain that's seen within any company. Next, we will look at how to build a data culture and some obstacles that can come up when you're trying to do that, as well as how you can try to overcome those. There are many tools out there, so we will show you some of the challenges or some of the different um, tools that are available, as well as kind of the challenges faced with traditional analytics tools. And then we'll finish off with how Power BI can step up and be the star of analytics and help create that data culture that you're seeking. Um, throughout the presentation, We'll show you different demonstrations of Power BI so you can kind of get a feel of what BI or Power BI is capable of. And as questions come up for you, please enter them in the questions box. We'll try to answer them throughout the presentation. And if we can't get to them at any point, we will follow up with you afterwards to do so. So uh, jumping into it, let's get an idea of why data culture is so important. Presently, only 23% of small to medium-sized businesses are using data analytics. And of that 23%, only 65% of them are using, or 65% of them are using simple Excel spreadsheets for their analysis. That is a surprisingly small number of businesses using their own data to make better decisions. This leads them to miss out on a lot of opportunities. In fact, businesses who do use data analytics saw the revenue grow by four times year over year. That's all by using data that the companies already have. So there's a big opportunity there. Um, let's move on to the next slide. Yeah, on this slide, uh, you're gonna see a survey that was done and asked companies what benefits they saw from the use of data analytics. And we'll focus on the corporate wide users as that covers most people within a given company. So 60% of the users in big data enterprises were able to find new solutions to common problems. And of those surveyed, 78% of those users felt an increase in their own product productivity and a reduction in risks while lowering procedural costs. Um, another huge benefit is just faster decision-making, which 75% felt that through using data analytics, they're able to make meaningful decisions much faster. So let's move on to that next slide. All right. So how important is data in decision-making process? Well, on this slide, you'll see that as an influential factor in the decision-making process, it ranks second, right behind management's judgment. So you'll see data analytics is important from the top to the bottom within an organization. All right, so that kind of covers the basis. What I'd like to do is actually post a poll for uh, you guys and just kind of get your guys feedback on a couple of things. We got three poll questions here. I'll launch the first one and it is, do you know what a what self-service BI is and have you ever done it? So if you don't mind, please filling this out. We'll give probably like 15 seconds for this one. 
and we appreciate all of your responses. Thank you very much. And it looks like uh, we got quite a few people in here who are either not aware of what self-service BI is or have and have never done it. So it looks like the majority is saying no here. All right, with a couple people saying yes. I'm gonna close this one out and thank you very much for that. It's gonna do another one. And have you ever used Power BI? Real simple. Let's see um, what people have experience with here. Looks like we have quite a people, quite a few people who have used Power BI. That's great. We're looking at about a 70%, 30% split here. 70% saying yes and 30% saying no. Let's leave this open for another couple seconds. Oh wow, this changed. We are looking at 50-50. That's great. And let's before move on to the... Much, move on. Huh? I'm saying before it changes too much, you should move on. <laughs> All right, let's launch this final poll. It is multiple choice. So what is the biggest pain point in your organization right now? Is it complexity of data processes? Um, are there just not enough resources to explore your data? Um, is it incomplete or erroneous? Or is it just kind of poor presentation of your analytics? So let's see what, what's, what are the pain points here? And so overall, what we're kind of looking at based on the feedback, we're seeing it's kind of a toss up between uh, complexity and then incomplete with um, in third place, we got poor presentation. So great, I'm gonna close this up. Thank you guys very much for your feedback. And uh, I guess this is where I'm gonna hand it off to Tayeb and he's gonna take you through uh, some more information here. Tayeb, take it away. Thank you so much. Uh, so I'm gonna start with uh, talking about what actually is a data-driven culture. And we're going to talk a lot more about this. I'm going to go into specifics. But I think uh, fundamentally speaking, there is need to have clarity in terms of what needs to happen to achieve a data-driven culture. And it has to do with human behavior, which is a function of uh, human mindset. So if an organization feel that they could provide data analytics to stakeholders, which means that they have built dashboards and reports and they have their IT team that is monitoring the usage of those, and they feel that they can enforce data usage and they can instill data cultures, then unfortunately, uh, that is not the right way of going about driving data culture in the organization. The reason for that is because human behavior is mostly driven by deep understanding of the pros and cons of different initiatives. So if you really want your organization to adopt data culture, then you have to have a good understanding of the value of the data. And when I say value of the data, I don't mean that you go to everyone's desk and say, oh, man, the data is super valuable. You should start using it. But what the data stewards and the chief uh, data officers they can do is that they can uh, showcase the value to different departments and different stakeholders by making very specific use case implementations of data analytics. So for example, you can have a data warehouse manager and if you could showcase to them through a report how they're doing their order fulfillment and they could then through those reports and dashboards track missing orders and they could track the whole process from picking, packaging, shipping, then they would start understanding the value of the data available to them on their fingerprint, uh, fingertips. Same is the case with a sales manager. If you could build a report for a sales manager, which could help that sales manager achieve their sales quota by evaluating the gap in the market, then that is going to drive uh, adoption as well as help them understand the value of the data. Similarly, on the executive level, it's the same. If the executives could have oversights of each department and they could understand how those departments are performing just through some dashboards and analytics and that helps them understand the value of the data but understanding the value of data is not enough for data culture one of the important aspects of any cultural change is time you cannot expect this to happen overnight 
However, uh, the best way to go about this is make something specific to a certain department or group of users and let them be your advocates for selling it for you internally within the organization. And slowly you would see that other departments would come to you uh, as a chief data officer and say, we would also like to see some of those dashboards and the reports that you have done for department A or department B for that matter. And the last but not least, something which is very important to be able to drive that culture is to make sure that people in the organization, they understand that whatever core values you have as the organization, whatever you're doing with their data aligns with them. So you're not doing any data reports or analytics because you want to get visibility into what someone is doing or any breach of their privacy, but you're doing it primarily so that you can facilitate and help them do their jobs better and make better decisions. These are kind of the important aspects of um, the data-driven culture. And in the next slide, we are gonna talk about the analytics value chain. Now it's very important to understand the core relation between this value chain and the data culture. Most of our customers, when they come to us, they ask for dashboards and reports. And that is where it stops. We build some dashboards and reports for them, they use it, but they are never able to take it to the next step, which is analysis and data-driven culture, which means that you're using that data to make decisions uh, and better decisions on the executive level. And once you are doing that, only then you can talk about predictive analytics, which is about predicting the future, looking at the past trends or prescriptive analytics, which is about even recommending certain actions. So in this data value chain uh, slide, you can see that it all starts from the data. So you would have structured data in terms of your line of business applications, such as your CRM, your ERP system. And then you have unstructured data, which is your Excel files and your text files. And then obviously the first level, like I was talking about is reporting. So you can see that within reporting, uh, you would just be looking at the historicals and you would be uh, combining the dots to build a picture, but you're just trying to understand the trends. But where it makes more sense is when you start looking at the analysis, which means that you're using that historical data to slice and dice data to get meaningful insights that can help you do actions, which is firstly your decisions and then drive actions. Now, why is it important, this value chain? Because in order for you to get to the analysis and the action stage, you need to invest a bit more than just basic reporting, both on the data cleansing side as well as building these reports and dashboards and then making them more into uh, the analytics tools that are available. And then you need to serve them in different ways. And we'll talk about that in more detail in the next slide. But that is a correlation with the value that you're providing and the cost that you are putting into that. So it's very, very important that the cost factor is taken into consideration and you won't be able to invest that much unless you have built that data culture and people understand the value of the data in your organization. So there's a direct correlation between this analytics value chain and the data culture. And you cannot achieve the highest maximum value that is driven by these actions till you have cohesion, a cohesive understanding across the board in the organization as to what your organization gets through this uh, value chain from the data culture standpoint. If you could move to the next slide, please. So this is, a um, bottom-up approach about implementing data-driven culture in your organization. So as you would all imagine, uh, it starts with the data. And in order to use data effectively, you need to have good data, which means that you need performing data cleansing and you're doing better data management. But that is not enough. Once you have that data, you need to have people in the organization who could put this data to good use and they could make meaning out of this data through reports and dashboard and analytics. And these two things we do all the time, and a lot of organizations are investing in this. But after this, all the way to the culture, that is where we see that some companies go all the way, and for that they need to understand the data value, hence the previous slide on the value chain. But well, what needs to happen after this is once you have these reports and dashboards, you need to figure out a way to serve these to the organization. So for example, if you have sales reports, you should be serving them through your CRM system, maybe by embedding them in your CRM system so that people don't have to go to five different systems to fetch that information. 
Similarly, if you have ERP system, then you have ERP specific dashboards and reports like budget versus actual, you should be embedding them within the ERP. So that's about how you serve that information to your organization. And then once you're able to do that, and once that data is available, there's still a need to establish data mindset, which is you enforcing people that are they actually using the data available to them for making their decisions. And this is where that HIPPO concept comes in. Are you making decisions based on data or do you have that one individual in the office, which is that highest paid person who is making all the decisions because nobody is there to question their decisions. And I know it might sound too blunt, but the thing is that even those people in those kind of roles, they want data-driven decisions because that's how the organization is eventually going to grow. So for example, here internally, we do a lot of analytics for AlphaBone, and that's why people like me, they get questioned a lot. So as long as you're okay with that, probably you will be embracing this. Um, and that's very, very important. And that's the data leadership. And that's where you need to have somebody who is the data champion, who is your chief data officer, who could just make sure that people understand uh, what and how data can help them and they are being the advocates to drive that mindset that is required. And once you're able to do all of these, only then you can say that you've been able to have that collaborative, inclusive, and open culture that is required to have a data-driven culture in your organization. So just wanted to share this, and with that, I'm going to hand it over to Avas so that he could share with us some of the obstacles with achieving this and how some of the tools that are available out there can help in your journey to achieve data-driven culture. Over to you, Avas. Okay, thank you Tayeb and Nick for sharing valuable information related to data culture. So, so far we have discussed benefits of data culture and how can we implement it in any organization. Now I want to talk about what are the what are the biggest obstacles in embracing a data culture in any organization. As for the studies, there are four major obstacles in adopting a data culture. And the biggest obstacle is lack of data maturity. Uh, second one is unawareness of new technologies and then third one is the fear of cost associated with this process and last one um, people are not willing to learn new things well in my next uh, couple of slides i will talk all about how we can address this problem using microsoft business intelligence platform so let's discuss uh, first the biggest factor of not adopting a data culture which is lack of data maturity. For any organization, we have observed with our experiences that diversity of the data sources or heterogeneous systems make overall data less mature. Even outdated data sources, complex business processes, and lack of master data management and unverified data model uh, reduce the confidence on overall data. And I will discuss these focus area one by one, then I will demo it to you how to quickly apply these things on Power BI. So first thing that makes data immature is diversity of the data. Well, we are living in a world where every, everything in the business process is generating a data. And to bring all the data in a single platform, it's, a, it's a really a challenging job for any developer or any organization. Um, and how Power BI helps to face this challenge? Well, it provides 150 plus uh, type of out of the box data connector to source data into a single platform, uh, which is Power BI Tableau da Data Cubes. And then we can build reports and dashboard on it. Well, if out of the box data connector isn't available for your uh, source or your ERP, then you can also build your own custom connector. Second thing that reduce the confidence level on data maturity is obsolete data. Well, if data is outdated, then it will be no, it will be no in any use. Um, and Power BI can fetch data from um, sources periodically or even can work on live data. It can also get streaming data from APIs. And even if your data reside inside a on-prem system, then Power BI can get updated data using specialized gateway software. So all the data in data model uh, will always be updated in Power BI service. 
So uh, let's talk about the complexity of the business processes. Well, it is a major bottleneck in data maturity, uh, as our surveys also said that, um, and it is the most expensive thing to implement. Uh, we have to perform a lot of ETLs, have to manage data warehouses and stage servers, and it is very complex process to manage. Then Power BI comes to play its role. Power Query or M Engine is the most intuitive way to implement ETL steps, even in Power BI Desktop. No need for specialized ETL or ELT tools for data processing. We can do it inside mQuery or Advanced Query Editor of Power BI Desktop. And even we can perform these steps using uh, Power BI interface ribbon buttons. So it's pretty amazing and it's very easy to use for everyone. And the next thing um, is creating a master data or managing it. Uh, it's really a hectic job. Well, in Power BI, we can use specialized data flows to create master data repository, and they are all hosted on Azure Data Lake. So it will always be updated, and there is no limit on data size on Power BI service data flows. And the last thing is, um, and well, so far we have learned how we can make data more mature by keeping it updated and error-free. But now how to tell the user that uh, what data model is ready to be used? Well, Power in Power BI, we can mark data models as promoted or certified. So for instance, anyone who wanna build something on let's say financial data, then he can get the certified data model from, from Power BI service and can start building an analytics without knowing all the complexity behind the data model. So let me show you um, how actually you can do it in Power BI. So Let's have a quick demo here. Well, this is my Power BI desktop and it is uh, free to download. You can download it uh, from Microsoft site. Um, and this is my report and it is regarding the equipment analytics. Uh, and as I have told you that you can source, um, you can source different data, so uh, data sources inside a single report. So in this view, when you will press on the get data, all the 150 data, uh, data connector will be rendered here. And also if you have a custom data connector, then it will also come here. So in this report, I am getting data uh, from three sources. One is from Dynamic 365 CRM, second one is Oracle NetSuite, and the third one is on um, Excel file that is hosted inside my laptop. So all these three data sources has been combined inside a single report for better analytics. And I have created all the joins and the relationship between them. So this is about uh, how you can address the diversity of the data sources inside your Power BI desktop. Now let's talk about how you can simplify your complex business processes um, using the advanced query editor. So these are my tables uh, that I have fetched from Dynamics 365, Excel sheet, and the NetSuite. And I wanna show you uh, how I have performed data cleansing and um, data massaging steps on, on this data. So in this AB equipment table, I have performed around 15 plus steps. And they are have been listed in um, under my applied steps. And you can also choose your I'm curious expertise to uh, apply your customized step, but believe me, these all step have been performed using ribbon button and action available on a uh, ribbon section of Power BI. So basically this script is um, ETL script. It is extracting and transforming data on the source system and then getting it in uh, and dumping it into Power BI data model. You can also apply ELT steps. So in ELT step, you have to just fetch all the data from the source, dump it in Power BI data model, and then apply transformation. So both the approaches can easily be applied in Power BI desktop. So uh, after applying the biz complex business problems um, in the data, then the next step is you have to publish your report into Power BI service, which is, in, which is an online version of Power BI. So when you will publish this thing, uh, publish your report in Power BI service, you have to go to app.powerbi.com and, and you have to navigate to your workspace and then you will see your report under your workspace. So this is your equipment report and it has also uploaded his data model separately. So 
now I want to show you how you can configure its data model. So this is the view of data model setting. And I have, as I have mentioned that it is sourcing data from heterogeneous sources. One, one is online system and one is on-prem system. So for on-prem, I am using my personalized gateway, uh, which is a specialized software that connects Power BI online service to my laptop using this uh, on-premise gateway. And it, it will extract Excel file data from my laptop and it will upload it to Power BI service. And after configuring a gateway for my connection, I have to schedule, enable schedule refresh for my data set. You can schedule, uh, you can configure your schedule refresh up to eight times per day. And if you are a premium user, then you can apply 48 times per day. So I have enabled my schedule refresh and then add another time and you can apply um, a, a time for this schedule refresh. Okay. So now let's talk about how we can tag this data model. For instance, I have worked very hard on this data model and it is now been certified or promoted for the production deployment. Then I can tag this uh, data model as in certified. So anyone in my organization with appropriate rights um, can use this data model for their own uh, development needs or analytical needs. So um, what about Keeping your uh, keeping your master data in in Power BI service. As you can see here, I have created a master data repository for employee, and it is a Power BI data flow. Power BI data flow is backed by uh, Microsoft Azure Data Lake, and all the data uh, that I'm extracting from Dynamics 365 has been fetched from CRM and dumped it into Azure Data Lake. Um, and we can apply our ETL script on that on the same window as I, as I have shown you in Power BI Desktop, and then I can also enable schedule refresh for this data model. So all the master data repository um, uh, information will be always updated and always av available for 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 to use for analytics. Okay, so this is a, for these are the four steps that you can use to um, uh, use and uh, make your data more mature. So let's get back to the presentation. Yeah, and while you get back, we did have a question come in, um, and I think it speaks to kind of all those connectors that are available or sources. Um, can you speak to the security of Power BI when using all these kind of custom data connectors? Yeah, so well out of the box uh, custom connectors support their own um, security model, but uh, when you are creating a custom data connector, then you have option to enable OAuth 2.0 code flow authentication for, uh, for fetching data. And you can also implement windows with the authentication or you can use um, you, you can use SQL server based authentication for your data connector. So there are tons of option uh, for authentication that you can apply for your custom data connectors. Perfect, thank you. Okay, so now let's talk about um, the se second biggest factor that could hamper the data culture process. And it is a lack of awareness. Well, if someone is still using dinosaur era BI solutions like Cognos or OBI for their BI needs, then obviously they might be fulfilling their contemporary needs, but these tools would be the major bottleneck for future data culture. In such organizations, um, well, only the privileged one uh, would be able to get the access on anal analytics. And that makes data is only for the specific people in organization. Well, on contrary, data should be available for everyone in the company. And this is this thing is in the DNA of new era business intelligence platform. And you can also see the magic quadrant of by Gartner for analytics and business intelligence platform uh, that Power BI is clear winner and Tableau is a runner-up. Uh, so it's very important for the decision makers to take the benefits of cutting edge um, technologies. So the third obstacle in adopting a data culture is cost associated with this whole process. Traditional analytics platform are too much expensive. You have to pay upfront for, for the licenses and even it takes more cost on training for such tools. Uh, on the other side, Power BI is just $9.99 per user per month. No long-term association. Just pay for the month and you can cancel subscription next month. 
and uh, i want to share some frightening information with you uh, if you want to co use cognos you have to pay 125 dollars per user per month with minimum 150 users licenses and it and total cost is around 18750 dollar at least and obi is the most ex expensive one i i believe you need some sort of accountant for its licensing it is uh, well it is with the long term agreement with um, 200 dollars per user and 46000 dollar for publishers or pre processors uh, it's really huge um, and then tableau cost you 175 dollar per user per month and clickview will cost you around 70 dollars per user per month they are all too much expensive but in power bi you have to just pay nine dollar per user and the fourth factor factor that could fail the data culture is the mindset of people who are not willing to learn new tools and technologies obviously uh, it is because of the fear it, it is because it is because of fear of failure people do not learn new things as they think that they will fail to learn because of the complexity of the system and also companies spend a lot of money on such training that uh, that also put more fuel on their fear however power bi is very easy to use uh, and i will demo it to you how easily anyone can build reports in power bi so the most interesting feature of the power bi is it is for everyone and um, we can divide all employees in an organization in following role there are end users we have analysts we have it professionals and the developer and now let's see what power bi has to offer for each individuals for the end users power bi is pretty amazing it has out of the box modern visualization and themes power bi as service is completely cloud based software as a service it also offers on prem infrastructure if any organization is isn't cloud ready and don't want to move their data from on prem to on cloud then they can use on prem version of the power bi users can enable alerts and subscription user can use live dashboard built on streaming data sets and they can also integrate Power BI content with Cortana. So you can ask any question about your data right from your Windows bar or any size of the mobile devices. So, well, role of the analyst and IT professionals are very crucial in data culture. Mainly they are all content creator. Uh, mostly analysts build a business data model as they are domain experts and they know the business better than anyone else in the company. So they build initial prototype of the data model. Quickly, they connect with multiple data sources, mash up the multiple table and uh, data, and, and, data and, the, and build quick and dirty reporting to present KPIs and important information. Meanwhile, they request IIT professionals to evaluate report impact and create enterprise data model then IT professional enhance the reports and dashboard to keep things professionally. So uh, business analyst and IT professionals work together to uh, for the common goal, which is uh, best analytics from the Power BI. Well, as any other tool of the Microsoft, there are a lot of features for developer. We can use .NET or JavaScript APIs to integrate Power BI reports or dashboard with any custom application. We can bind the content with any Microsoft application. Even we can create completely different look and feel for reporting that could fill uh, that that could fit with their ISV application theme. And for the data scientists, we can use uh, Python and R R for data processing. Uh, we can use Azure Data Lakes, Azure Synapse for big data processing, um, and we can build Power BI reports on top of it. We can also create our own data connector, as I as I, I have mentioned, and it is completely integrated with Power Platform, like Power Apps and Power Automate. So there are tons of customization available on GitHub that could be reused for your uh, your organization. Okay, finally, um, we are now at the point where we can confidently say that Power BI is a platform that truly encourages power self-service BI. We have discussed employee's role in Power BI, and based on it, we can, we can drive 
business-led self-service BI, which is a bottom-up approach. Business analytics build quick and dirty things uh, for initial analysis in it. Uh, we can drive IT managed self-service using Power BI, which is a blended approach where IT professional drive data culture with the help of business analyst. And then we can also implement corporate BI using Power, uh, Power BI, which is a top-down approach. And mostly IT professional provide content to the end user and end user just consume them. And in Power BI, they can also tra transform this type of content for their own need. They can transform the visual, they can uh, save their bookmarks, and they can use for their own needs. As I have explained that they can use Power BI data model by its own. Well, Power BI didn't just stop on best self-service experience. Instead, they come up with an outrageous feature uh, of self-service AI. Uh, in Power BI, anyone with the basic knowledge of data can use AI for analytics. They have many AI-enabled visuals and features um, and can be modified as per requirement of the client. So I want to show you a few uh, Power BI AI-enabled visual. And first AI-enabled visual that I want to show you is natural language question and answer. You can ask any question related to your data in natural language and Power BI will generate answer for you in form of visuals. And obviously, you can also ask in natural language to change the type of visual that you want to show in, uh, that you want to see in answer. Another important AI-enabled visual is Power BI. Uh, in Power BI is key influencer. It will highlight most interested traits of customer or product that contribute to, towards high performance. Uh, so that you can identify such um, traits and then you can work on other products to improve their performance as well. Last AI enabled visual that I'm going to show you is decomposition tree. You can monitor your whole process in a single visual. For instance, if you want to analyze your North American sales of games, then it will show you contribution of year, platform and game genre on overall sale. So the distribution of each segment has its own path based on selected combination, uh, and you can select all possible paths that are available in the in the visual. So uh, now in this demo, I want to show you, uh, as Nick has mentioned in his first slide, that most of the companies, 65% of the companies are still using Excel or the spreadsheet. So in this demo, I will tell you how they can leverage their experience from spreadsheet or the excel sheet into the power bi so um i have all type of data excel file in my folder and i will start from the most complex one uh, i have finance report uh, in which we have data model inside it and we have created power pivot um, relationship in this excel file so if if someone want to import this data inside inside Power BI desktop with all this information that they, they have already created in Power in Excel sheet, then we can do it. When I will import this Excel sheet inside the Power BI, then all the relationships, all the um, KPIs and measures will be imported inside my Power BI desktop. So let's open my Power BI desktop and go to the file and select uh, import from Power Query or Power Pivot and select your Excel file. Let me close it first. Okay, so when I will import my data, then it will extract all the tables, all the data, all the relationship, and all the KPIs that uh, that were in my Excel file. I think it's still open. I'm going to import it again. Don't save it. Start loading data. And while this uh, is going on, I did have a question come in about kind of the licensing side of things. You had said there was 999 for the license, and then there's also the premium mm -hmm. 
which is a yeah. little bit more expensive. Um, can you speak to why you would go for the basic or the standard, I guess, versus the premium? Well, in premium, uh, Microsoft will provide you dedicated processors um, and uh, RAM on the Power BI service, and there are unlimited pro account <clears throat> for the end users. So you have to just pay five thousand dollar for uh, for, uh, for the month for the P1 SKU, and then all the premium feature of the Power BI will be av available for you. So uh, it will be dedicated capacity for you on Power BI service. Gotcha. Okay. Thanks. Okay, so I have imported all my data inside my um, Power BI desktop from Excel. Now let's quickly build something um, in my Power BI report. So as I have mentioned you that we have already created relationship between the tables. So uh, uh, let me show you these relationship has been intacted and they have imported all the relationship with the Excel data. And uh, I am going to select account type. and amount that has been consumed by account from the fact table and it will generate a, um, a beautiful visual for you so uh, this is a pretty basic version of um, the power bi report and when you will select publish then you it will ask you to save first and i'm going to save it And then it will ask you uh, where you want to publish um, in the Power BI service. I will select my workspace. And it will take a few time to upload it to Power BI service. Okay. It's, it has been uploaded on Power BI service. Um, and let me refresh this view. And now I have a complete Power BI report that has been generated on Excel sheet uh, or Excel um, Excel file. So this is your Power BI report. Now I want to show you what are the other options available in Power BI service to work with the Excel. So we can also get data inside Power BI service. Um, press on the get data and press on the get files and select local file that has been hosted on your Power BI uh, on your laptop. So I'm going to export data from my hello world data file and it will ask me either you want to export your data inside Power BI service as a data model or you want to upload this workbook as an um, as an workbook inside the Power BI workspace. So there are two options. Um, we can also do that thing as I have explained we can do uh, do this option from the power bi desktop but if someone is not willing to move uh, from from the excel to power bi then then they can upload their excel file inside the workspaces of the power bi so it will completely move your excel file into the online version of the excel file and it will integrate your uh, spreadsheet uh, as a workbook inside your workspace so under your workspace you can see I have now an Excel file, which is an Excel online, and all the data uh, is available, and the and all the experience that the user uh, can feel inside the Excel file can uh, experience inside the workspace, uh, or workspace of the workbook. So uh, this is the one option, and and the integration of Power BI with with the Excel is very smooth. You can you can connect your Excel directly with with the Power BI. For instance, uh, let me open this file again. Um, I can, in Power Pivot View, I can get all the data models from Power BI service inside my inside my Power BI, uh, inside my Excel sheet. So let's go to the insert, click on the pivot table, pivot table from Power BI, and it will list all the data models that are available on Power BI, and it will also tag them, uh, for example, the certified data connector will appear first, then promoted, and then uh, we have unverified data sets. So if if we want to build something on uh, on the equipment report that I have published in my previous demo, then I will get this data model from Power BI service, and it will create a new sheet, and uh, I can work on, on the live data that has been hosted on Power BI service uh, inside my Excel sheet. So, uh, and 
vice versa you can also analyze your data that is available in uh, in power bi for example if i go to equipment report and i want to this is my um, power bi report and i want to analyze this report inside my excel i can go to the export section and then i can click on excel analyze in excel then it will download me excel sheet for this report and when i will save this thing and i open it then it will integrate this excel excel sheet uh, with with the data model of uh, equipment analytics report so the integration between the excel and the uh, power bi is tightly integrated you can um, work on excel you can work on power bi you can migrate your data uh, between both of this system uh, without any uh, without losing anything and without any uh, extra effort so it's pretty smooth and and the second thing that i want to share you uh, well when we talk about that power bi is everyone then collaboration is very important thing so in power bi for instance if i want to um, if i want to collaborate on this uh, report then i can tag someone i can comment on this report and for example i, I can tag nick about uh, nick please explain uh, this situation in uh, month of august then nick can come in and he he will see that um, the data only available for august will render uh, in his view when he will click on this bookmark and and another thing of sharing is you can chat you can chat um, on the channels of the teams uh, regarding any specific report and um, you can share your content through the teams and you can talk about it over the teams and then you can also export your report into powerpoint or the pdf and then can share it with the others so, and you can also subscribe your report uh, periodically um, and then it will send email with the link of the report in directly into your inbox so that's all from my side today over to you nick and thayev thank you so much Avers. we go to the slide deck again okay awesome exciting all right so uh, i hope you were able to see the value of uh, different tools as well as uh, i think from the mindset standpoint uh, what your organization can do to drive at the data culture as well. And this is just a slide uh, to share some of our experiences in different industries as well as in different functional areas as to what we have done from the data standpoint with different teams. And all of those kind of contributed towards us putting together this slide deck. Uh, where we wanted to showcase to you that some industries we have seen, uh, for example, when we are in the AAC industry, we see that there is a huge need for data analytics because there are lots of disconnected disjointed systems and decision making can tremendously improve if uh, there is that data driven culture embraced by the organization uh, versus some of the other industries that we see where we have more connected systems uh, we can do away with even just basic reports and dashboards as well but from the focused business area standpoint if i look at that you can see that we do a lot of forecasting uh, based on the analytics. We do market analysis, marketing analytics, which means that we are oil on all of your marketing efforts, demand generation, order management, enterprise reporting. And each one of them, obviously, to a certain extent, you can connect these disconnected systems. Power BI is an amazing tool. But you can use other tools as well. Our BI team does provide uh, services for other tools. Uh, so we have experience with those but at the end of the day once you have built those reports and those fancy dashboards it's about how you serve those and again based on the industry uh, based on different systems that your organization has you've got to use the tools that allow you to be able to embed these reports and serve them in a way that now you're not adding another layer of tools for them to use to be able uh, to do their job effectively so that's an important aspect that we had discussed in that data culture as well as to how you serve this to the organization. And then if you want to go beyond that, where you want to eliminate all those uh, high profile individuals who would influence just based on uh, their position in the organization, a certain decision, and you want to go to more data driven decision, 
then obviously you need to be able to do uh, more specific uh, use case based reports that could help solve problems across different uh, use cases. So for example, when we work in energy retail, we know that we're talking about power consumption. And if you're launching a new program in a certain region, you've got to make sure that you could look at and analyze the existing trends in there. There's a lot that we do in semiconductor uh, from manufacturing and uh, food and beverage industry standpoint. We've been working with organizations such as Monster Beverages and <clears throat> others to analyze their data that is coming from disparate systems and you'll be building dashboards and reports for them. Uh, but if you want to go beyond that and instill data culture, you have to make sure that all the stakeholders, they embrace uh, that data and use it, which is the most important thing. Uh, for driving decisions, and only then you can be effective in uh, incorporating that culture in your organization. So that's just our, our focus areas and some of our experiences that we wanted to share. And with that, I will hand it to you, Nick, to wrap it up. Okay, I got a quick question before we uh, finish up with this slide here, and it's, why should you take a data scientist with you into the jungle? <laughs> So they can I take think, care of Python problems. Yeah. So, <laughs> so say the last part of the question one more time. Why would it you was a joke. It was a bad joke, and now I'm embarrassed. <laughs> 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 oh, I hope I got a couple laughs out of that one. <laughs> um, but yeah, that wraps up everything for this webinar. Um, I do hope that uh, you guys were able to find something insightful out of it. And if you did, or if you are still interested in um, learning more about BI, then we would love to chat with you. So we can set up just a free one hour workshop where we brainstorm some ideas with you. We can identify some of the challenges your business is facing, look at what kind of platforms you're using and um, kind of determine if and how much your organization can benefit from BI. So. Um, if you are interested, please reach out to us. We have our contact information on the next slide and um, we can um, sit down and talk. Otherwise, we will be reaching out to you with the recording of the webinar so you can pass it along to anybody else who you think might be interested. And uh, for those of you who have questions, we will fulfill those. Um, Outside of that, uh, thank you very much for joining and have a great rest of your day.